How's it going, people? Thought I'd play some more of this. This is only volume one. I didn't know there was any other volumes, but there's one volume. There ought to be more. I'm trying a new um, brand called Stoney's Beer, a natural alternative to what I don't know. Um, a smooth, refreshing, premium beer. Something never had. I mean, I've had premium, smooth, and refreshing beers, but I haven't had this this brand, so thought I'd pick some up. Give it a try. Ooh. Yeah, this is a this is one pint, so a little more than my glass can handle. How about that? I'll watch for that next time. All right, new book, Book of Helaman, which is 16 chapters long, and I'm anxious to blow through it. So, all right, here's a a large masthead and then a smaller one. Let's read them both. An account of the Nephites, their wars and contentions and their dissensions, and also the prophecies of many holy prophets before the coming of Christ. Of course. According to the records of Helaman, who was the son of Helaman, and also according to the records of his sons, even down to the coming of Christ. And also, many of the Lamanites are converted. An account of their conversion. An account of the righteousness of the Lamanites. And the wickedness and abominations of the Nephites. That's right, I'm drinking to abominations. That's very good. It tastes an awful lot like simpler times. According to the record of Helaman and his sons, even down to the coming of Christ, which he said earlier on, in the middle of this long-ass uh, paragraph, which is called the Book of Helaman and C. And, and that is the and and C, period. What, Helaman and company? What is and C? I don't see anything here. Let's say. Nope. No footnotes. All right. Chapter 1's masthead. I guess this was the masthead of the entire book. Now here's a ch the masthead of the first chapter. Pahoran's sons contend for the judgment seat. Pahoran the second is murdered by Kishkumen. Coriantumer. Nephite dissenter. Zarahimla captured and retaken. So don't worry. It's all going to work out. One. And now. It came to pass. No. And now, behold. It came to pass. Got to stop running on automatic. In the commencement of the 40th year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, there began to be a serious difficulty among the people of the Nephites. Two, for behold, Pahoran had died, and gone the way of all the earth. Decomposition. Conversion into something else. Therefore, there began to be a serious contention concerning who should have the judgment seat among the brethren, who were the sons of P Pahoran. Three. Now, these are their names. Who did contend for the judgment seat? Oh boy. Who did also cause the people to contend? All right, here we go. Pahoran the second, 
I, that's my parentheses. It's Pohoran, son of Pohoran, Pohoran, Pohoran. Oh, Hakunai, I think. And Pakumanai. Four. Now, these are not all the sons of Pohoran, for he had many. But these are they who did contend for the judgment seat. Therefore, they did cause three divisions among the people. Five, nevertheless, it came to pass. This is nice and not too expensive. Stoney's beer. That Pahoran had a was appointed, that's Pahoran Jr., uh, by the voice of the people to be chief. Well, they don't have to change any of the letterheads, you know, or anything. But be chief judge and a governor over the people of Nephi. Six. And it came to pass. That, Pakumanai, when he saw that he could not obtain the judgment seat, he did unite with the voice of the people. He was a stand up guy and a good loser. Must have a lot of practice at that. Just kidding. Seven. But behold, Piankai, P A A N C H I. Piankai? Something like that. Pancake guy. I don't know. <laughs> and that part of the people who were desirous that he should be their governor was exceeding wroth. She'd been pissed off for just being named that. I hate you, Dad. <laughs> You're a lousy namer. <sighs> yeah, they, they were desirous that he should be their governor, and they were uh, was exceeding wroth all the people that were behind him. Therefore, he was about to flatter away those people to rise up in rebellion against their brethren. Eight, and it came to pass, <coughs> timely, mm, it's nice, that takes me that camping. As he was about to do this, behold, he was taken and was tried according to the voice of the people, and condemned unto death. For he had raised up in rebellion, and sought to destroy the liberty of the people. 9. Now, when those people who were desirous that he should be their governor saw that he was condemned unto death, therefore they were angry. And behold, they sent forth one Kishkumen, even to the judgment seat of Pahoran, Jr., and murdered Pahoran as he sat upon the judgment seat. A lot of that going on in here. Was that like three, four times now? Should have kept count. Ten. And he was pursued by the servants of Pahoran, but behold, so speedy was the flight of Kishkumen that no one could overtake him. <sighs> I'm just glad I don't have to pronounce that other guy's name anymore, that, now that he's dead. <laughs> Thanks for killing him off fast. He had a lame name. Eleven. And he went unto those that sent him. And that's uh, Kishkumen. And they all entered into a covenant, yea, 
swearing by their everlasting maker that they would tell no man that Kishkumen had murdered Pahoran. Twelve. Therefore, Kishkumen was not known among the people of Nephi, for he was in disguise at the time that he murdered Pahoran. And Kishkumen and his band, who had covenanted with him, did mingle themselves among the people in a manner that they could not be found. But as many as were found were condemned unto death. Thirteen. And now, behold, Akumani was appointed, according to the voice of the people, to be a chief judge and a governor over the people, to reign in the stead of his brother Pahoran. And it was according to his right, and all this was done in the fortieth year of the reign of the judges, and it had an end. Fourteen, and it came to pass. In the forty and first year of the reign of the judges, that the Lamanites had gathered together an innumerable army of men, and armed them with swords and scimitars and with bows and with arrows and with headplates and with breastplates and with all manner of shields of every kind, really. I'm sure you exaggerate a little there. We're being we're we're waxing. Fifteen, and they came down again that they might pitch battle against the Nephites, and they were led by a man whose name was Coriantumr, and he was a descendant of Zarahimla, and he was a dissenter from among the Nephites, and he was a large and a mighty man. Sixteen, therefore the king of the Lamanites, whose name was Tubaloth, Tubaloth, who was the son of Amaron, supposing that Coriantumr, being a mighty man, could stand against the Nephites with his strength and also with his great wisdom, insomuch that by sending him forth he should gain power over the Nephites. 17. Therefore, he did stir them up to anger, and he did gather together his armies, and he did appoint Coriantumr to be their leader, and he did cause that they should march down to the land of Zarahimla to battle against the Nephites. 18. And it came to pass... of so much contention and so much difficulty in the government that they had not kept sufficient guards in the land of Zarahemla. For they had supposed that the Lamanites durst not come into the heart of their lands to attack that great city Zarahemla. 
19. But it came to pass. That Coriantumr did march forth at the head of his numerous host. Now a host is a great number, of, and numerous is kind of implies a great number. I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. I don't think so. And it came upon the inhabitants of the city, and their march was with such exceeding great speed that there was no time for the Nephites to gather together their armies. 20. Therefore, Coriantumr did cut down the watch of the, by the entrance of the city, and did march forth with his whole army into the city, and they did slay every one who did oppose them, insomuch that they did take possession of the whole city. <clears throat> 21. And it came to pass. That Pakumanai, who was the chief judge, if you were keeping track, at least for this moment, did flee before Coriantumr, even to the walls of the city, and it came to pass, still in verse 21, that Coriantumr did smite him against the wall, insomuch that he died. And thus ended the days of the Kumanai, I guess. 22. And now when Coriantumr saw that he was in possession of the city of Zerahimla, and saw that the Nephites had fled before them, and were slain, and were taken, and were cast into prison, and that he had obtained the possession of the strongest hold in all the land, his heart took courage insomuch that he was about to go forth against all the land. 23. And now he did not tarry in the land of Zarahemla, but he did march forth with a large army, even towards the city of Bountiful, for it was his determination to go forth and cut his way through with the sword that he might obtain the north parts of the land. 24. And, supposing that their greatest strength was in the center of the land, therefore he did march forth, giving them no time to assemble themselves together, save it were in small bodies, and in this manner they did fall upon them and cut them down to the earth. 25. But behold, this march of Coriantumr through the center of the land gave Moroni Ha great advantage over them, notwithstanding the greatness of the number of the Nephites who were slain. Yeah, I mean, his bad, you know. <laughs> 26. For behold, Moroni Ha had supposed that the Lamanites durst not come into the center of the land, but that they would attack the cities round about in the borders, as they had hitherto done. Yeah. Therefore, Moronaiha had caused that their strong army should maintain those parts round about up by the borders. 26. But behold, the Lamanites were not frightened according to his desire. But they had come into the center, center of the land, and had taken the capital city, which was the city of Zarahimla, and were marching through the most capital parts of the land, slaying the people with a great slaughter. 
I hate it when that happens, when someone gets slayed with a great slaughter. Slaying the people with a great slaughter, both men, women, and children, taking possession of many cities and of many strongholds. 28. But when Moraniha had discovered this, he immediately sent forth Lehi with an army round about about to head them before Hang on. they should come to the land bountiful. 29. And thus he did. And he did head them before they came to the land of bountiful and gave unto them battle insomuch that they began to retreat back towards the land of Zarahemla. 30. And it came to pass mm, that's nice. That Moraniha did head them in their retreat and did give unto them battle, insomuch that it became an exceedingly bloody battle. Yea, many were slain, and among the number who were slain, Coriantumr was also found. But don't worry, there'll be another one. I, I think he's one of the uh, Jaredites. I think he's the last Jaredite, kind of like the last Moroni. Moroni becomes an angel and all that shit. Something like that. We'll get to it. We'll drive off that bridge when we get there. Alright. 31. And now, behold, the Lamanites could not retreat either way, neither on the north, nor on the south, nor on the east, nor on the west. They were trying, like, I don't know, uh, northeast? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Uh, for they were surrounded on every hand by the Nephites. 32. And thus had Coriantumr plunged the Lamanites into the midst of the Nephites, insomuch that they were in the power of the Nephites, and he himself was slain. Yeah, said that earlier. Uh, two verses ago. <laughs> And the Lamanites did yield themselves into the hands of the Nephites. 33. And it came to pass. Uh, hang on. Still pretty fucking cold. <laughs> That Moraniha took possession of the city of Zarahemla again, and caused that the Lamanites who had been taken prisoners should depart out of the land in peace. 34. And thus ended the forty and first year of the reign of the judges, and that's it for uh, chapter one of Helaman. So... That was kind of interesting. It's kind of more the same, but they're trying. <coughs> I mean, they're almost getting a little... They're, they're almost Charlton Heston. They're almost that good. <laughs> anyway, I haven't read ahead. I don't want to. I'm just going to read this cold, because I don't remember it very well. But I seem to remember there's like a couple of weird, stupid miracles. But... Maybe I'm wrong, and I'm going to be, like, totally impressed this time, you know. So, I mean, I was sober when I read it last time. <laughs> anyway, I hope you'll see me in the next thrilling chapter, which is chapter two. Oh, and by the way, peace, the fuck, out. Have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you're having. And I hope you really do.